All right, y'all, welcome back to the Postman tutorial series. This will be part two on request capture. Today, we're going to cover how you might leverage your browser to capture the existing requests to your system and then import them into Postman so you might set up your environment in Postman, your collection, faster. And of course, with that said, let's get into it. All right, we're going to start in the browser today. This is my Firefox browser, and we're looking at Feedly, which is a news aggregator service I happen to like using. So to get started, you're going to need to be able to open the developer tools. And there are generally about two ways to do this. You can hit F12 and bring up this little option here. Or you can, and by the way, my capture tools aren't very good here, so you're going to see none of my right-click menus. But if you right-click, there will be an option for something like inspect element or open developer tools. And this will bring you to the same tool set. Now, I will include some screenshots in the actual video on YouTube, so you'll be able to see this. We'll get there in a moment. Right now, let's go to the Network tab. And you'll notice nothing's recorded here. Until you take an action, nothing will be. So let's go over to Read Later and watch what happens. And you see there are a couple of pieces here. It does some Google Analytics, it goes to Stripe, it goes to Suggestions, and it gets my content. And this is the one I want to focus on today. So this is just one request in the system, and I could capture all of these. But today, I want to copy this request. So again, Apologies for my right-click menu. I'll include a screenshot in the video. Right-click, copy, and copy as curl. I particularly like to use the Windows option since I'm generally working on Windows systems. And after that, you have to jump into Postman. So let's go and resume over there. Now, over in Postman, it's ridiculously easy. We're going to go and use this wonderful big button, Import. And, of course, our content is a raw text input. And so I'm going to simply paste it in. And I'm going to click continue, import, and it will have imported this entire request for me, which will include the URL. And you'll notice even these little parameters are included, like my stream ID or this CV option. It'll even go so far as to include the headers that were used, like my cookies or maybe my uh, authorization token, which, of course, I will hide. And so if I go and immediately send this, I will get the same results that the Feedly website was using. And I can now begin to explore the structure, seeing how it's got this URL, or even this nice little summary object where it can show me some of the content. Now, as it stands, this would allow me to take any existing system I have and begin to import requests for it. I can take the UI that might be mostly working right now and begin to explore the back end of my controllers and even the kind of parameter lists I'm creating to start very quickly assembling requests. I can teach Postman how to create test data by doing it through the UI first, capturing the request that was made, maybe the exact post call or even the sequence of post calls, import them into Postman in a collection and begin to tinker with them. And this really sets us up for some of the real power you can find in Postman, because once you have that request, you can give it just about anything. That's really all there is to it for request capture, guys. You take your browser, you open the developer tools, most of them with F12 or some variation of that, or just use the right-click menus, and then go to the network tab, and you can literally copy the requests that your browser are making on your behalf. And from there, import them into Postman and begin to use them to truly drive your system without the UI. Now, this is only half the tool because it really becomes powerful when you begin to variableize the contents of your parameters or your headers or even in your post body so that you can begin to use the same request many times and usually with slightly different data. But that's for a different day. If you've been enjoying this series, I'd hope you take a moment to check out my blog at daniel.scheidler.io. I have additional posts to this kind of thing and hopefully more useful information for you there. And otherwise, thank you for taking the time. I hope you see you back for your video number three.